Welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up this week, I've got part two of the build for our giveaway cars. Um, the votes have been coming in, and I'm encouraged to see how many people have voted. So uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, go back to our video section and check out part one of this video. It should be linked down in the description. Um, also in the links is a URL that you can follow to a voting page where you can vote for which of the three cars you would like to win. I am going to give away two of these cars and one will go into my personal collection. So up first we have the VW bus. Um, now if you remember right, this casting was really bent. Uh, the, the top had been kind of crushed over. And so I ended up having to fix the uh, A-pillars on this. Um, even the original one <laughs> that uh, wasn't missing ended up breaking when I was trying to bend it back. And so I had a fair amount of body work that went into this. Um, to paint it, I'm just using a Tester's uh, Metallic Silver paint. Um, it's not quite the same as the original color from Lesney, and I may see if I can make some adjustments to this to get it a little bit closer to that original metallic look silver but uh, at least this first coat is going to be a good base coat it's a fairly straightforward process I got pretty good even coverage using my airbrush I am working on a video that's going to come out um, hopefully this week maybe next that's a tool time video or part of my tool time series where I go over how to clean your airbrush. Um, I cleaned all of my airbrushes right before I started painting these giveaway cars. I wanted really good, uh, clean results with all the paint, and the first step in really achieving your best paint result is starting with really good, clean equipment. So watch for that video as well. Um, I use these uh, surgical uh, pliers, uh, these, these kind of forceps, to hold my models while I'm painting. And I use a little magnet that lets me uh, stick them on my vise when I'm done. Up next, we've got the tipper truck. Um, this is a, it's kind of an unusual color of red. I've got two different standard reds from testers. So I'm going to start with the dark red. And uh, I, I use enamel paints. Um, I'm pretty sure, at least from my research, that Lesney used enamel. Enamel is a little bit more difficult to work with than the acrylics, and it does take a little more finesse. But I've gotten pretty good uh, at trying to figure out the best methods for how to do that. And so I'm going to blend these two reds that I have because the original red color is a little bit lighter than my darkest red, and it's a little bit darker than my lightest red. Um, and as always, if you want them to come out of your airbrush, you'll have to use a little reducer in there just to water down the, the paint, get it flowable so it'll go through the airbrush. So I use the uh, the testers reducer. Um, it's always a good idea when you're painting to try to use the same reducer that is made for your paints. Um, also, a lot of times the color after adding the reducer will change a little bit. I find that on the enamels it tends to darken up um, after you've added the reducer. So. We're going to add just a touch of the lighter red again to try to lighten this up a little bit more. And uh, lastly, I found that a lot of times the color changes um, after you spray it, after you get it on the model. And so that's another reason that my first coat, I always want to do a really light coat, a tack coat. Um, and you'll see that here. Uh, as the paint starts coming out, I do notice that this looks, even with all the lighter red that I put in there, it still looks quite a bit darker than the original model was. And that's okay, because I'm going to do two to three coats on most of these models. And this first light coat is really just to act as kind of a primer, just to adhere to that um, casting. And so uh, I still want to get good coverage. I want everything to be even. Um, and you can see that this really is coming out very nice, um, but it is a lot darker than what this original model was. And on some of these older ones, I, I really want it to be a true restoration. I want it to be as close to the original as possible. 
So I'm going to go back, even though in the bottle my lighter red looks like it's too light, I'm going to go back and try just some straight um, red, just right out of the, the light red bottle, um, the tester's light red color. And we will see what that looks like. I'm a lot happier with the lighter red color. And I don't know if it's the, the darker base that maybe helped it work out or if it really was just closer to that lighter red to begin with. But uh, I'm really happy, really pleased with how that finish turned out. So we're gonna call it good. Next, we've got the bucket or the, the dump part of the tipper truck. Um, and it's kind of a, an unusual color of cream, uh, almost a yellowy taupe. So I'm starting with an off-white, uh, Tester's off-white, and then I'm going to add just a few drops of their gloss yellow into that, um, just to try to adjust that color a little bit. I've found that when I'm mixing the lighter colors, I tend to overmix the paint if I start with the darker color. And so the best method for me has been to start with my lighter color and then slowly, slowly add just a few drops of the darker color to try to kind of sneak up on what is that proper mix. Um, again, I'll add the reducer to see how that changes. And that kind of lightened out a little bit more than I wanted. So we're going to add a few more drops of the yellow and do another mix. The... Uh, the little mixer I use, it's a cappuccino frother, and I've got a link down in the description for all the tools that I use uh, in doing these restorations. So you can check those out. They're all Amazon links. So we're going to give this color a shot. And uh, much like the truck, you know, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'll start with that light tack coat. I'll kind of see what the color looks like as it's coming out. And if I still need to make some adjustments, if I want to darken it up, add a little more of the white, add a little more of the yellow, I can do that after I get that initial coat down, that first tack coat. Um, also, as the paint layers up, as it gets thicker, the colors do tend to change a little bit. So a lot of times something that, you know, right out of the, the spray gun, the initial time, first coat I put it on, I think it's too light. By the time I get to the second or third coat, it's darkened up. And that's exactly what's happened with this one. Um, the testers paints are really pretty stable. I, I don't notice a lot of color change, especially with the enamels, between when they're wet and when they dry. Um, some of my acrylic paints, the color shift or color changes a lot as they dry, and I haven't really noticed that with the enamels. So uh, usually, and, and I trust my eyes a lot when I'm mixing the paint, but usually whatever I got in the bucket is what my end results are going to be. On the bus, the uh, the glass was not in great shape. Uh, that top was really, really scratched up, really worn. Uh, so I started out with just a little of my 600 grit uh, wet dry paper just to sand out the, the major scratches that were in that top. Of course, that leaves the plastic uh, somewhat cloudy. And the best way to address that is with these little buffing wheels. Um, again, I've got a link for those. It's not the standard buffing wheel that you get in most of your multi-tool um, packs. The, the little cotton wheels that are in those are really hard. Um, and I, I have tried them, uh, made, made some previous mistakes on some other windscreens, and uh, could not figure out how all these different restoration channels that I was following, how are these guys doing this? And uh, finally, and, and I don't remember who it was that turned me on to them, um, but they had gone over it in their video and they said, you know, you really need these super, super soft buffing wheels. And I do them on not my lowest speed, but the, just the next notch up from the lowest speed on my multi-tool. And going too fast uh, with the wheels, you can still melt the plastic and tear it up. So I put a little of the, uh, the buffing compound on there 
kind of rub it around with my fingers, let it dry a little bit. And then uh, usually just a, a quick once over with these super soft buffing wheels is enough to bring back that clarity and shine to the plastics. On the Lark Wagoneer, um, this is a two-piece model because it's got the uh, little piece that slides there in the back. And all of the others in my collection, uh, they are two different colors. And they're both really somewhat unusual. Um, I, I looked through all of the different color variations that the Lark Wagoneer came in. And for any of you who are a serious collector, you, you know that there's like five or six different shades uh, that those models were made in. They came anywhere from a, a darker turquoise to a lighter turquoise to a, an almost a seafoam green color. And the, the greeny blue is harder to find. It is the more rare of the color variations that are out there. And uh, I've only seen pictures of it. I do not have one in my, in my collection. And so I'm going to try to go for that greeny turquoise blue on this giveaway car and I'm really not sure how to get there um, because I don't have any of those colors in my little paint stock here so we're gonna try a little of the uh, baby blue or the sky blue I've got some dark navy blue I've got some evergreen so we're just gonna kinda put these together and see if we can inch up on it So I had to do a little editing in my video here. You would not believe how difficult it was to get this color. And I finally ended up using some of this lime green. I, I'm not even sure when I bought that lime green. I think it maybe came in a mix pack or 10 pack of other colors that I was after. But adding that lime green finally brought me into that really pretty kind of turquoise blue color. That kind of seafoam green color. And it's almost an exact match to the photos that I've seen of what some of those color variations look like. So uh, we're going to see what it looks like on the casting here. And again, um, I start out with a light coat all the way around, but uh, as hard as it was for me to mix this color, I don't think that I'm going to go back and do a whole bunch of coats. I think I'm going to try to just keep working my way around this model while I've got the paint um, because... I will never be able to max, uh, match this exact shade if I have to go back and, and mix more paint. And so uh, I'm just going to see if I can do a continual spray on this, just slowly build up my two, three layers, and uh, just keep it moving. Um, usually the key with this is, is to try to keep it as even coverage as you can. That You don't want it thicker or heavier on one part of the model. And a good way to gauge that is really to look at the details in the castings. If you're starting to lose some of the door jams, the handles, um, any of those little details that are there, you're starting to go too thick. And so I'm just going to keep working my way around while this paint is wet and try to get all of this shot in one spray out. The last piece on this model is the little sliding door in the back. It's a very light kind of powder blue color and so uh, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to start with just a, a plain gloss white um, as the base. And then I'm going to take my lightest blue and add just a couple of drops in there. See if I can eke up on the color. Um, I'm not going to be able to hold on to this thing. So we're just going to try to shoot it right there on the bench. This, uh, this is going to be the end of my part two video. I'm just doing all the paint outs. Part three will be the assembly of all of these models. So watch for that video. Um, I'm doing all the editing on a whole bunch of videos all at the same time. So uh, I'll load those up so that they premiere, you know, one a week or two a week. So watch for kind of a flurry of restoration videos that are coming. Um, as always, if you enjoyed it, click that like button. button. Uh, if you want to follow all of our other videos, click our subscribe link. And uh, don't forget to vote for the giveaway because you too could possibly win one of these three cars. Thanks so much.